Hello again. This is a tarot for beginners, uh, number two. Anyway, I'm getting a great response on number one, so I thought we'd go right into number two here. And um, we'll take it from there. So going over things that I think are very common questions that people ask and how to, how to start with the tarot. You know, I, it's, it's just, it's good to have some insight about, am I lost here? Am I wasting my time with the things I'm doing? What's important and what isn't important? Um, I've been reading professionally for 30 years now, my wife and I both. And it's been a wonderful ride. It's been amazing. And you can do the same thing or longer. So anyway, some some things that I thought would be good to go over. So there's there's some things that I really think throw in throw a confusion into um, learning, but I think of these some things to me are misconceptions. One of them is procedures before reading, like cutting the cards with the left hand, because that's closest to the heart. It doesn't make any difference to me. It, you don't need a ritual like that. It's not going to have any effect on the reading, how you cut the cards. And to give you an idea that there's some, that things like this have to be followed so, so closely and so um, with little details like that are just extra things you got to remember that are not really necessary. Card spreads also usually show the number of the order, the way they're supposed to be laid down. Number one goes here, number two goes there, number three goes here. I don't think that's important at all either. Neither is the design of the, of the layout that important. I use a Celtic cross most of the time. Uh, that's just out of force of habit, that's what I learned. But the order of those cards are laid in, whether they're going counterclockwise around the in a wheel or clockwise around the wheel. It doesn't make any difference. What's important is what those meanings, what those positions represent. The only way you want to lay them out isn't really important. It's what you're addressing in the reading that's important. So the, the order that they're laid down isn't important. And I've actually had my own Celtic cross, which a lot of people do. After a while, you just have to say, well, this is going to work better for me if I do it this way or that way. So you're going to do that anyway. So don't worry about having to be some exact thing that you have to follow. Um, play it loose with that. See what works best for you. And don't be afraid to change something. Try it this way. Try it that way. Go ahead and try it. See what you think. Another thing I think is uh, you might find interesting is I don't use reverse meanings. Again, 30 year pro, I've been reading the tarot all my life, but um, well, I started in 69, but professionally 93 and um, never used reverse meanings. No need to form to me anyway. Uh, the card right side up or right upside down can have both meanings that you're getting from a reverse meaning depending on how you're seeing it with the other cards. And there's no reason to have um, read a specific way just because it's laid upside down to me. And um, I know other readers just as good as me that use them. If you like the idea of using reverse meanings, go ahead. Nothing wrong with it. But you need to have them. I think it'd be better for to say, well, okay, first I'm going to learn just to read the tarot cards. And later on, if I want to go with reverse meanings, now I'll add that in. But you could read professionally without reverse meanings. And I think it's important to know that. I've done a lot of classes on the tarot. And um, there's 78 tarot cards. And so what you have with that is 78 different meanings. And if you use using reverse meanings, now, totally different meaning, reversed, that's 156 meanings. 
and some sources will say, well, take a card and, and learn it each day. Memorize a card each day. Well, that'd be 78 days, a lot of, a lot of um, time. Being used something I don't think is that important. The way I read the tarot and the way I teach it is we have the 22 major arcana. That's one pack of the cards. Those are very deep cards, have a lot of um, deep meanings to them. And then you have 56 minor arcana. Four suits, ace through 10, and four court cards. Very close to your playing cards. And, um, but I don't use the suit. I use the suit in a way where it's, um, the suit to me represents the four basic functions of consciousness. Suit of, the suit of swords represents your thinking, thought. The suit of cups represents your feelings, emotions. The suit of wands represents your spirit, what's in your soul, what makes you you. And the suit of coins or pentacles represents your physical, material world. And that's all it is to me. So to me, if you take the Ace of Wands or the Ace of Swords or the Ace of Cups or the Ace of, of Coins, to me, they're all just Aces. Aces are new beginnings, new ideas, something new. It doesn't make any difference what the suit is. Same with the Fives. The five of Swords, Five of Cups, Five of Wands, Five of Coins. It, it doesn't make any difference. It's a five. Fives are change to me. Some type of change. Whether it's a need to change or there's a change happening. Some, some type of a disruption or rearrangement of things. Keywords work better than uh, some extravagant um, meaning that you have to try to memorize. But uh, the, not using the suits means there's only 14 minor arcana meanings you have to know. Ace through 10, that's 10 of them, and then four court cards. And that's it. So now you have 22 major arcana and 14 minor arcana. That's a total of 36 meanings. No reverse. So that's better than 156. 36 works out a lot better for me. And like I said, this is the way I've read professionally for 30 years with great results. Just as good as the results as people who read reverse meanings and use the suits differently. To me, the person that's getting the reading comes to you with the suit in mind. If the four suits represents the four basic functions of consciousness, if it's a relationship issue, they're coming to you with the cups issue. If it's something they're trying to figure out, thinking it's a, it's a sword issue. If it's some material thing like a career, it's a pentacle issue. And if it's something they've been yearning for, something they're striving for, something they just want to do in their life, that's a wand issue. So they come to me with the suit. I could bring the suit into it, into the reading if I want to later on, fine tuning it. So well, this is a wand over here. So that's your spirit. Or this is something really coming from your heart because it's a cup. But what's really important to me is the rank meaning. New beginnings for aces, choices for twos, the creative energy for threes, stability for the fours, change for the fives, overcoming obstacles for the sixes, confidence for the sevens, Advancement for the eights, attainment for nines, and a completion for the tens. To me, pages represent a new path, a new situation, like an apprenticeship of some type, new direction. Knights represent taking action, initiative of some type. Queens represent patience and understanding. And kings represent knowledge or information, valuable information. 
knowledge. And that's it. And that's how I read them. And it's worked out very well. Um, if later on you want to add the suits in a fine way, a fine tuning it in some way, you can with that type of a thinking. But just remember, just the, the cups represent feeling, swords represents thinking, your thoughts. Wands represent your spirit, and pentacles represent your material, physical world. And anything you do will actually affect all three of all four of those functions of your consciousness. So the suits all work together anyway. They all blend into each other anyway. So I thought I would mention that. It's a good way to start. If you want to keep things simple, I think it's a good idea. So I think it's a good way to, to, to start out is you just keep, keep things simple. And you could read professionally by keeping things simple. Later on, if you want to add more to it, I have students of mine who I taught where they didn't use, I taught no reverse meanings. And later on, he said, you know what, Vince, I'm going to start using reverse meanings. And they're professional then. So yeah, go ahead. And they like them. So they use them. Uh, so it's, it's um, some never use them, but it's up to you. You don't need them, but you can later on. See how you go with it. See what happens. As you feel your way through it, I think that's what you'll find. As far as the meanings go, the 22 majors, that um, a good way to memorize those meanings is you have 22 cards. Take the fool, that's number zero. The others are number one through 22. And make three rows of seven, one through seven, bottom row eight through 14, and the next row 15 through 21. And you can actually print this out on my website, Tarot Maps, in the downloads page with the, my, with the Rider Weight deck. I have a diagram that way. And just take a look at it. That way. It's easy for you to memorize them better if you see them in a position like that. You can know, okay, the chariots are the last card in the first row. And the devil is the first card on the third row. And it helps you to put a meaning into it easier. Again, my meanings are all key words, and I go over that explicitly in um, Essential Tarot with the Rider Weight deck. All 78 cards have 20 key words surrounding each card mapped out around them. And I do the same key words in Bare Bones Tarot with the Marseille deck. Same map, just a different card in the center. Keywords work very well. And they're all agreeable to traditional, which you'll find in the in other sources anyway. But keywords allow you to find your own words or own meanings for the cards easier than memorizing a bunch of sentences and what the card's supposed to mean. Keywords allow you to be more creative and more intuitive. So I think they work better. Again, the deck isn't really that important. Um, whatever you like. I uh, mentioned earlier on the first video that I talked about um, talked about images on the cards. And I think if you could read a Marseille deck, you could read any tarot deck because the images are very basic. They're just pip cards on the minor ace through 10. And you have to have your own meaning in your head to what the card means then. What's good about having that, and if you want to use a, a, a deck with images in it, like the Rider Weight deck or other decks, most other decks out there, you have um, an explicit image. I use the Ten of Swords as a good example. Very gloomy looking card. Tens represent completion. And But when you have an, a specific image on there for something that on a minor arcana, the majors could be a little different because they're universal principles there that are deep anyway. So it's okay to have an image on that. But when you're talking about something like a minor arcana image, 
Um, and you have a, a definition as completion for like the tens. There's all sorts of completions. Ten of swords can represent. Carol Marseille deck has just 10 swords on it. There's nothing gloomy about that. Most other decks today have depicted that card based on the rider weight of the Ten of Swords, which is a, a man laying face down with 10 swords in his back. That's a completion, but it's a gloomy one. And it doesn't necessarily have to be interpreted that way. So if you know that when you're reading, you can say, well, yeah, okay, that's one type of completion, but I think the completion I'm seeing over here is a little bit more useful for you. Um, I use the analogy of a person that's just retired. Well, that's a completion, wonderful completion. Ten of swords can come up with, ten of swords can be representing that person's retirement. When you use a specific image, it would be like, let's say one of the tarot cards was called the ocean. The ocean. And so somebody is going to draw or paint a picture representing the ocean. Uh, you could have a nice serene looking ocean, very peaceful, calm. Or you could have a total storm with violent waves, all sorts of chaos going in on that scene. Ocean could be very violent. They're both ocean, but you can only show one or the other. You can't show both in one image. So it's how you really limit yourself. The more specific the image becomes, the more limitation you put on that card if you're going to literally take that image as the only meaning the card can have. And there's the decks like the Rider Waite, I use it all the time. But I do know that the Ten of Swords can be, is just a completion, and they're just showing one aspect of a completion, one type of completion. There's, and uh, you can take the other cards that are the Eight, the eight of Swords, attain uh, advancement. Uh, she's bound and tied. The issue is still advancement, but a, a need to release bonds. The Nine of Swords is attainment, a woman we weeping in bed, in the middle of the night, attainment of a sad truth, but there's other attainments too that are very happy ones. So when you have an image, it's, it, the more specific, the more definition you give a card, the more limitations you're putting on what the card can represent. So keywords are a good way to have meanings of the cards. I would say in the beginning, it's a, if you want to try this, it works out very well. Memorize the uh, keywords for the 22 major arcana. Memorize the keywords for 14 numerical ranks of the minor arcana, ace through 10 in the four court cards. No reverse meanings. That gives you 36 meanings to know. And you could do that with one word a piece. And if you can do that, you could read professionally. <laughs> and uh, if you want to add on more to that later on, you can. Again, the deck's not important. Whatever deck you like, they all work. I spoke uh, yesterday about the chess set as an analogy. But I didn't, wasn't really clear about that. I was saying you could use a cheap chess set or you could use an expensive chess set. It doesn't make any difference in your game. What I was really trying to say is that they have all sorts of different chess sets out there. You can get Lord of the Rings chess set. You can get the, the American Civil War chess set. You can get the Renaissance chess set. Or you can get a traditional Staunton tournament chess set and a whole bunch of other different ones. But it doesn't make any difference. You're still using the same way. The, the, the pieces are still used the same way. The one chess set isn't going to work better for you than another one. If you know the pieces and you know how the game is played, 
you're going to play it the same no matter what chess set you're using. If you know the, the tarot cards and you know their meanings, you're going to play them no matter what deck you're using. So I think reverse meanings, and I think um, the, uh, the order that the cards are to be placed in, into the card spread, and a lot of the other things I was just talking about, I think that could throw a lot of confusion into things that I think that we can just eliminate right now with that. And um, you can still read professionally very well. And um, that's what I think. So I hope you like this. Keep throwing cards. We'll talk soon.